All right, so we, we are here at the uh, University of Utah Research Park. Uh, when I was up at the Alta, we, we talked about the, the fact that they established this park way back in 1968. So that's the year after they met to plan out the ARPANET. Uh, the, the building behind me is actually it's a vacant office presently, but in the early 2000s, it was the at least the contact mailing address for a company called um, Cyber Kinetics. And Cyber Kinetics was affiliated, had affiliations with the University of Utah, uh, but it was a project of Don, John Donahue, which, who actually had an affiliation with Brown University. So it was a collective project. And Do, uh, John Donahue essentially was the creator of the field of neural prosthetics. And so what we're seeing moving forward in terms of man-machine interfaces is that um, there's an intention to understand and engineer neural impulses in our mind and then using our neural impulses um, with brain machine interfaces to control uh, other electrical objects outside of us, including various devices and even remote robotics. And so that's what's being advanced. All of this is dual use, dual purpose technology. So the, the, the public facing intention of this is to um, provide assistance to people who have physical limitations, who are paralyzed or, um, you know, locked in and that they can through the thoughts in their mind and these neural prosthetic devices, which are now, um, that product has been refined to be called BrainGate, uh, that they would be able to uh, live in their homes or maybe the elderly. So through their thought process, they would operate a remote robotic arm or various kind of robotics to provide assistance in their home. Now, what people generally aren't thinking about is that the next phase of globalization is remote robotic labor, uh, telepresence labor, and at the moment they're still having people put on VR headsets and hold haptics and operate these robots. Um, and whether they're small cooler robots like the KiwiBot or the more humanoid shaped uh, robots that are being developed by Sanctuary AI. And so I, I suspect that what is coming, eventually it's certainly not going to be um, a good idea that people continue to work uh, work days in VR headsets. That's just not going to be doable. And then eventually there will be an imperative that people start to get these enhancements uh, with neural prosthetics so that they can, through their own consciousness, operate the robots remotely just in their brain. And this would be people who are not um, physically limited, but just regular people who would be functioning through a robot at, at distance. So this, um, John Donahue, again, I mentioned he's affiliated with Brown. He's also affiliated with the WIS Center for um, Bio and Neuroengineering in Geneva. So he has these broad affiliations. Uh, the other people, individuals associated are um, Majel uh, Saruya of Jefferson Hospital, Gerhard Fries, and Nico Hatsopoulos, who is with the University of Chicago. Um, now, and then in BrainGate in 2008 became part of BlackRock Microsystems. Now I don't think it's the same BlackRock, um, but they have offices in Salt Lake City and ben West Bengal, India. So uh, Marcus Gerhardt and Sandeep Neji are the contacts for this company at this point. And so, you know, I was just looking up, they talked about using um, this Utah array, it's a microelectronic array for neural stimulation and mapping. And again, when we were down in Rice University uh, in Houston, they were talking about using neural programming, using neural engineering so that you could, through um, nanoelectronic systems, engineer minds. And on the one hand, they can engineer how your mind works, and then they can engineer it so your mind might interface with the machine. Um, and so it's all very overwhelming, but I was just looking up the origins of uh, the microelectronic arrays, and that, that dates back, back to the 1950s. So they've been working on these devices to refine them. Um, you know, these arrays are much smaller than the Neuralink. Um, um, you know, it's based on a similar technology, but less invasive. And so then we, there are many, many ethical questions. And again, this fits into what we were talking about um, in our attendance at the Transhumanism Conference. You know, what does it mean to be human? And then what are the implications of certain humans being augmented either willingly or unwillingly to be able to participate in society or economic transactions? It's quite significant. So again, behind me is the former offices of Cyberkinetics. 
Uh, our situation is that we're at the base of these Wasatch Range. It's, you know, it's snowing. We're in the proximity of the powder uh, research test bed for alternative like telecommunication array frequency um, research that's going on. We have the powder f falling on us right now. Um, and then it's understanding our place in time, right? Because increasingly it feels like we're disconnected from the time. Our time is speeding up. But once we're grounded on the land, we're actually on the shores of an ancient, ancient lake, uh, Bonneville Lake, that extended across much of Utah and Las Vegas, uh, uh, Nevada and Idaho. So we've got this time continuum of this amazing amounts of, amounts of time that we're you know, at the base of these mountains. And these aren't even the biggest ones. There's giant, giant mountains that we were on when we were up at Alta. And then um, at the base, the shoreline, there's a trail that goes behind this complex that's the, the Bonneville Shore Trail that goes for like 100 miles along the bed of this ancient prehistoric lake. So, you know, we're just tiny little bits, you know, in the universe. And yet we're, we're having a disproportionate effect to all of the things around us with the technologies that we're developing and they're jumping leaps and bounds ahead and they're enmeshed in um, you know, global economic structures. In fact, now this program is connected with Tufts University in Boston. Um, the other affiliations with this, um, it has uh, academic connections to, so it's University of Utah, Brown, Tufts, Emory, and MIT. And Tufts is the alma mater of Pierre and Pam Omidyar who are connected with um, uh, the good ID and impact investing and of course eBay. So that's, you've got the whole auctioning, you know, auctioning of what bits, bits and bobs in your closet or is it you're auctioning your mind and your consciousness. Um, and, and Tufts is also very connected to the Lego robotics work and also um, digital interventions and dyslexia. So there are all of these layers. People don't know what the other people are doing, but the fact that this, this brain machine interface has ties to Tufts, um, which leads into the robotics, the impact investing, and the digital education interventions for children is very significant.